SU football is back. Fans once again will be in the Dome watching the games in person come Saturday. Good evening. I'm Matt Mulcahy. And I'm Megan Coleman. SU's home opener against Rutgers is happening Saturday, and fans will be allowed in the Dome. But there are a number of new rules you'll have to follow when you get there. Our Vanessa Rizzitano is working for you tonight. Vanessa? Thank you so much, Matt and Megan. Now, it's been a long time coming, and finally fans are welcome back to the Dome after nearly two years now. Although this is very exciting news to welcome those fans back to the stadium, football at the Dome may be looking a little bit different this season. One of the big changes is the Dome is going cashless. So we want to make sure people are prepared for that. We may have one or two lines in the concession stands where we will accept cash just because we know it may be challenging for people. This year, coming to a game means more than packing for just a tailgate party. People, when they come to the facility, will need proof of a vaccine or a negative COVID test um, for people ages 5 and up, a PCR test administered 72 hours before entry, or an antigen test six hours before entry. You need to provide an identification to match with that, with that COVID test result. You can also take a photocopy of your license or anything like that, so everything's electronic, so you're not digging through documents. Those who are not prepared will be turned away. There's going to be people that we're just not going to be able to let in. It's just a fact. If they don't come with the documents that they need, and we can't just let people in. Onondaga County Executive Ryan McMahon calculated COVID numbers in the region just yesterday. He took to Twitter saying 39% of new cases over a four-day period were among fully vaccinated individuals. With this, I asked Pete Sala if he thinks proof of vaccination is even enough. Again, when you come in, you have to wear a mask unless you're eating or drinking. So in my opinion, it is. The dome was recently renovated and new air filtration systems were installed to make sure there is proper airflow. We're going to be air conditioning, so there'll be many air changes throughout the event. And we put all brand new filters in that we we're required to for the COVID requirements. Although smiling faces will be hiding under the masks, Syracuse University is just happy to have fans back in the stadium. It was weird in here. It was strange last year, right, uh, doing football games without anybody in the building. Um, it, it definitely took a while to get used to. It's what this building was built for. You can head on down to the Dome this Saturday afternoon as Syracuse hosts Rutgers for their first home game of the season. The game is set for 2 p.m. With COVID surging, just keeping students in the classroom for in-person learning could be a challenge this school year. Our Melanie Johnson spoke with a local charter school about the measures they're putting in place to keep students as safe as possible. Signs like this one outside of Ontech High School on the first day of school serving as a reminder to everyone about what needs to be done so these students can continue learning in person. As they walked in. I missed you, buddy. Good morning. Teacher Omar Gonzalez was the first voice students heard at Ontech High School for their first day of classes on Wednesday. Back in person, COVID got nothing on us. Temperature checks, hand sanitizer, and face masks right there before you walk in. Welcome back. When COVID first happened, even being out of school, we masked up and we still knocked on doors. We had students who hadn't come to school and we would knock on their doors and just back up on the sidewalk and say, listen, you haven't been to school in so long. What's going on? Um, and that's what we do. It makes a difference because I feel welcome. I feel like I belong. Nashawn Stinson and Adonis Carroll are a part of the charter school's first senior class. Both are happy to be back and away from remote learning. Just being at home by yourself is not really the same because you can't like be next to a teacher if you need help. You don't have the friends. So it's like it takes a toll on the mental health. I would love to do sports for the school, but if COVID was to come back, my fear was they'd take that last opportunity from me. Watch your hands, wear, um, put sanitizer on your hand and wear a mask. That's all if you don't want to get vaccinated. A majority of the teachers are fully vaccinated. Two things I'm very excited about uh, with, you know, vaccinations being out and, you know, the distance protocol going from six to three. We're cleaning down things, we're spraying, we're staying on top of it because we want to keep our family safe also. We do it for the kids. I think when you see the love and joy of kids and just the differences that you're making, you know that you're making a difference.
200 plus on tech students joined hundreds of Syracuse school district students who also started classes today. People who rely on public transportation are about to have even more trouble getting to their destination. Central bus service is cutting down significantly on their bus routes and they say they simply don't have enough drivers to keep up with their current schedules. Starting Monday, Central will use their Saturday schedule each day with some additional routes. It's a driver shortage that this week caused abrupt route cancellations, leaving some drivers stranded. Our Connor White, live in Syracuse for us tonight. Connor? Megan and Matt, the bus hub here in downtown Syracuse is busy this evening. We've had buses filtering in, in and out over the past half hour. And if you look at this schedule up here on the wall, there's gonna be a lot more happening throughout the evening. That list will be significantly shorter starting on Monday when they switch to that Saturday only schedule. And people who don't typically use or don't have access to a Saturday bus route are gonna be left waiting to see whether or not they're included. This is where Robert Grenia has caught a Centro bus to work every day for 25 years. He was left waiting on Tuesday morning. A bus never showed up and he nearly lost his job. And I depend on Central. I don't think they're right for just saying, here, we're just not going out there this morning. You know, what about me? What about my bills? Without a way to get to work, he called to see what happened. He says he was told the route was canceled that same morning. They said that we don't know until that day. Well, how am I, how am I supposed to know? I missed a day's work because of Central. Centro says Greenia's bus didn't come because there was no one to drive it. That's the exact type of situation we're trying to avoid. From the Centro hub to the buses themselves, the message is clear. They need drivers. We're doing everything we can to attract drivers at this point. It's just that the market is very tough. Down 35 drivers, they'll be operating on the Saturday schedule every day starting Monday. Our concern right now is that we're not able to meet all the services that we have on the schedule. And we don't want to leave people high and dry at a bus stop. Some routes, including the Central Square bus that normally picks up Greenia, don't run on the weekend. Centro says the Saturday schedule will be expanded to select routes, an update we won't see for another 24 to 48 hours. If that expansion doesn't include Central Square, Greenia says it means a nine mile walk just to get to work. Well, what about the multiple people that couldn't get a ride to work? Or what about the multiple people that couldn't go to the doctors? What about the multiple people that couldn't go do what they got to do? They just don't drive. We'll see how this schedule is expanded within the next 24 to 48 hours. So far, all Central can guarantee is that they will not be stopping their services for the Syracuse City School District or anything that helps seniors get to the grocery store or, of course, anything already included on those Saturday schedules. They're calling this a temporary problem but can't set an end date on when it will be fixed.